so sick of reality TV I'm so tired of my girlfriend ignoring me I sure could use a little bit of company Good morning everybody, it's Rita Smith, the number one food fairy um, and today I'm actually here to show you a really quick and simple way to make chili. I know there's probably thousands of better um, videos up on YouTube on how to make chili, but I was shocked. I was teaching a young person a couple of weeks ago how to make chili, and she was so relieved because she thought it was a very complex and mysterious process with tons of ingredients and, um, you know, complex cooking times. And I said, oh my God, no. Chili is the quickest, simplest, easiest thing in the world to make and probably the cheapest. Um, I'm going to put a brown hamburger in mine, but you can make vegetarian chili. If you're on a super tight budget, you can just make chili with beans. It's, it's A, it's not expensive, and B, there is no reason for it to be complicated. Um, the main thing you need to do in making chili is be able to open cans of beans. If you're you know, just going for the quick and simple, nutritious um, and convenient for lunches, chili. So here's what's going to go into the chili I'm making today. I'm going to brown some hamburger. When we come back, you'll see I've, I've just browned it in a frying pan. Um, I am going to chop uh, one onion, one big onion, and um, some green peppers. Uh, those will go in as well, although the peppers are optional. If you don't have them, um, you know, go ahead. I, I do like the onion, though. But um, uh, the main thing that goes into chili, in addition to the meat, is tomatoes. And um, you know what? Actually, buying to tomatoes yesterday, I bought three different kinds. I bought diced, crushed, and um, whole I, without even meaning to. It doesn't matter. Any kind of tomatoes, canned tomatoes that you have, um, just open them up and throw them in. In the province of Ontario, you can get a good big can of tomatoes. How big is that? 796 milliliters. That's like a quart of tomatoes. Um, for 99 cents, like, geez, what could be cheaper? So we're gonna put in tomatoes. We're gonna put in red kidney beets. I was actually able to find a no salt added kind, so I'm gonna um, use these, and um, if I need salt, I'll add it. But okay, so red kidney beans, any kind that you buy. Again, 99 cents a can, not expensive. And then I um, found a recipe years ago that called for baked beans. In addition to the red kidney beans, uh, you toss in a couple of cans of baked beans, which are sweet and which are delicious and have tomato in them already. And um, uh, so I got these for 59 cents a tin. I bought two cases of them in case the world ends. I have food in the cold room. Um, I'm going to add some, um, some baked beans. They add a really nice flavor to the chili. So baked beans, kidney beans, and canned tomatoes. If you're making a small batch, like with two cans of tomatoes, a couple of cans of kidney beans, a couple of cans of baked beans right there, that's um, $3, okay? Then you'll add some meat. Now the one thing that you um, do for sure wanna have is chili powder. You don't have to have anything more complicated than just compliments, chili powder. There's lots of other kinds, you can buy lots of other kinds. The old El Paso um, uh, spices are excellent, but they're small and they're expensive. These are kind of more the bulk, the bulk spices that you're gonna use. Um, and I also uh, have a couple of open chili powders, so I'm going to throw those in too because I want to, you want to use them up. You don't want to keep them around for too long. So we've got uh, meat, we've got beans, we've got onion, green pepper, and chili powder. That's it. That's chili. That's, that's it. My friend that I was teaching how to make chili was just blown away at how dead simple it was. Um, and she was only surprised that she hadn't learned to make it sooner. So here we're going to go. Um, I'll get out my can opener start opening cans. I am going to take a second to talk to you about the pots in which you cook chili. I'll do that um, after I stop the camera and uh, and then we'll fire away with all of this and let it cook for six or eight hours and at the end of it will be uh, enough food that to lunches for two weeks at least, uh, lunches and dinners or a big party um, for friends and I mean if you have to actually work to spend like 10 bucks on making chili. Um, so I'll be back in a moment with the pans that you could uh, cook chili in. Okay, just before we get to putting our chili to cook, um, I want to talk to you about three different ways you can cook chili. Um, one is on the stovetop, 
in a nice heavy bottom pan. This is a Paderno. Um, I love them and I, I give them away as gifts to all my family because I want everyone to have them. Um, there, it's a nice thick bottom pan. Um, you can put this on your stove top um, and stir it for an hour or two hours or three hours or for however long you're going to cook your chili all day long. Um, you can uh, uh, keep it on the top of your stove as long as long as you are stirring it every now and then. Okay, so that food doesn't stick to the bottom. And um, please don't try to cook chili in a very thin, cheap, uh, cheap pan that uh, will almost guarantee that the food will stick to the bottom. It's not because you're a bad cook. It's because you have a bad pan. Okay, so if you're going to cook on the stovetop, uh, I hope that you can manage to snag a nice, good, heavy pan and um, use that for on the stovetop chili. If you don't, if you don't have a good pan, you just have to stir it a lot and keep it on a very low temperature and take all day to do so. Um, because otherwise it's going to stick, it's going to burn and you'll be disappointed and frustrated and you might not want to do it again. Um, second is a crock pot. Um, so I'm going to put a batch of chili into this crock pot um, as you might do on a very busy work day if you're leaving in the morning or you've got everything put together the night before in the fridge then as you're running out the door you throw it into the crock pot on low because the meat is already cooked um, and uh, leave it plugged in and turned on and when you come home from work there's chili and it's fantastic and your family will love it. Um, the challenge with a crock pot is it doesn't um, reduce at all. It doesn't condense at all. All the liquid that goes into a crock pot stays in a crock pot because the lid is not supposed to come off during cooking. So um, although your chili will taste great and um, be convenient, it might be a little bit on the watery side because uh, because of the nature of cooking in a crock pot. You, it doesn't condense. It doesn't caramelize. Uh, it doesn't roast in any way, shape, or form. So all the liquid that goes into a crock pot stays in a crock pot. That's okay. If I had um, no other option uh, for my chili, I would use a crock pot and I'd come home and I'd be glad that it was there, even if it was a little bit on the watery side. But um, that's, uh, that's the trade-off that you use, that you have to make using a crock pot. Um, I'm going to actually uh, also use my totally favorite method, which is a cast iron Dutch oven. Um, and I'll bring that over right now. It's heavy, it's old, <laughs> it's awesome. This is my large um, Dutch oven and uh, I'm going to put a chili batch in here. I'm going to put it in the oven at 225 degrees. It's low and slow, it's gonna cook, it could cook all day. It could be in there from eight in the morning till almost eight at night. It, it's gonna be um, a long, slow cooking process, probably six or eight hours at the minimum. Um, I will leave the lid on it. It won't um, condense too much unless I want it to condense more. I'll take the lid off and it will uh, caramelize. It will become thicker. It will become sweeter. It will become more delicious. Um, I actually find a Dutch oven in the oven, especially in winter. I turn down the heat in my house and I turn on the oven. Let the oven heat the house. Um, uh, that a tomato based uh, kidney bean based chili recipe becomes just thicker and sweeter and more delicious all day long as it cooks. Yeah, I leave the lid on unless I see that it's not as thick as I want it to be and then I take the lid off. The other amazing benefit to cast iron is, and this is important for women, um, the iron from the pot actually migrates into the food and it's just nothing but helpful. A tomato based recipe because tomatoes react with the cast iron which chili is a tomato based recipe um, the tomato based recipes uh, spaghetti sauce pasta sauce of any kind um, chili here's the percentage of available iron to your body from cooking in a regular pan to cooking in a cast iron pan if you cook tomatoes in cast iron the available iron to your body is two thousand percent greater in cast iron than it is in let's say stainless steel okay so there's iron in the recipe there's iron in the beef there's iron in the beans there's iron in the recipe um, how much of that iron your body can use 
um, is dependent on how it is cooked. And uh, the cast iron cooking makes more than, well, two, it's a 2,000% increase of available iron uh, cooked in cast iron as opposed to cooked in stainless steel. So that might not be um, a huge issue for some people, but I know people who are iron deficient. I know women that have had, you know, three babies in five years. They've lost lots of blood. Their body is just struggling um, to recover from it. Cast iron. <laughs> cast iron. You get iron from cast iron and you get super amounts of iron if you cook tomatoes in cast iron. So there you go. That's one of my favorite reasons for using cast iron. And um, I'm going to make a giant batch of chili and I'm going to cook it in uh, the stainless steel stovetop, the... Uh, cast iron in the oven and the crock pot and we'll see how all three of them turn out maybe i'll see if i can invite some um, neighborhood friends over we'll have like a chili cook-off contest and see which of the three cooking methods is their favorite for chili okay the hamburger the ground beef uh, lean ground beef not extra lean, but lean, is um, frying on the stove. It's browning. I'm going to put it into the recipe momentarily. Um, I will rinse it first to get rid of all the excess fat as much as I can. Um, meantime, here's the biggest work, biggest piece of work in making chili is opening cans because I'm going to put in uh, uh, baked beans, which give it a nice sweet flavor. I'm going to put in kidney beans. Um, which are um, red or white, whatever kind of beans you use. Beans are essential to chili con carne. And, um, and I'm going to put in tomatoes. So I have diced tomatoes, um, crushed tomatoes, and whole tomatoes. I'm putting them all in. I don't care. At the end of the day, you won't notice any difference. As long as it's a can of tomatoes, it's a can of tomatoes. 99 cents. Go for it. So um, as you can see, one of the key elements to making uh, chili is having a good can opener. I have an electric one. It's almost 30 years old and it stopped working, but this one, this is an OXO. Um, it's pretty good, actually. I really like it a lot. And um, so I'm gonna open, oh, I don't know. By the time I'm done, I will probably have opened about 12 cans between the uh, baked beans, the kidney beans, and the tomatoes. A lot of cans. So um, that's mostly what chili is, canned stuff and brown hamburger. Okay, so we're back with my vat of chili. <laughs> if I could get the meniscus curve on this pot, probably I would try to. Um, but just for proportions, I wanted to let you know that I was able in this pot to put about four pounds of um, brown uh, ground beef, um, exactly four cans of tomatoes, four cans of kidney beans, and four cans of baked beans. I put in two full packages of chili powder. Um, just store-bought chili powder. It's not uh, fancy dance, you know, you can add cumin or whatever if you want, but you can just buy chili powder. Um, and I did add, I would say, close to a cup of dirty chopped garlic. So in this pan, there are tomatoes, kidney beans, baked beans, a chopped onion, three chopped green peppers, um, a cup of garlic, two packages of chili powder, and about four pounds of ground beef. So I am now going to um, divide this pan up into the three different cooking um, implements that we talked about. We've got a, a stainless steel Dutch oven on top of the stove. We've got a cast iron Dutch oven going into the stove, and we've got a crock pot. So we'll see, uh, we'll see which of those comes out to be the most delicious because convenient is important and um, um, what you have on hand, like what you can work with, is important, but delicious is important too, um, which is why I keep introducing cast iron, because cast iron makes everything more delicious. So I'm going to divide this up between the three pots, and we will see how it goes. Okay, um, I managed to divvy that up between the giant vat of chili that I started with. Um, I have, uh, this will go in the crock pot. This will go on top of the stove, and this will go in the oven. Um, it's going to, no matter how we slice this, it's going to take, um, I'm going to say, six hours minimum. This one on top of the stove, because it's heated only from the bottom, it might cook more quickly. Um, 
I'll keep it at a very low temperature, like two on my stove and stir it frequently, but still top of the stove is quickest. Um, oven can be second quickest because I'm going to cook it at 225, but you could put it in at 350 and be done faster. It just wouldn't be as delicious. Um, and then the crock pot takes what the crock pot takes. I'm going to put this in the crock pot on low um, and, uh, and we'll see how these three uh, different methods of cooking chili turn out. And I'm going to I'll see if I can contrive to do a little um, taste test at the end of it. I'm going to pull some strangers in off the street and um, see if they'll taste test my chili for me. If not, I'll just, you'll just have to take my word for it. Okay, so here we go with crock pot, stove top, and in the oven cast iron chili. Okay, just for uh, um, in the action shot, here is the stove top chili cooking in a small Dutch oven, a small Paderno Dutch oven on two on my stove. I might have to boost it to three to get it. Nah, I'm going to leave it at two. I'm just leave it low and slow for a long time at two so it doesn't burn or stick. And there's the stove top chili. Okay, over here we have the um, crock pot chili. It's, uh, it's actually, wow, we're like really hot already. Um, steaming already only on low in my crock pot and uh, we'll see how long that takes and then in the oven we have the Dutch oven nope oh, it's kind of dark you can't really see um, but the Dutch oven um, is cooking at 225 and I'm gonna bet it will stay there for at least six hours um, so uh, I'm gonna say six hours for the oven six hours for the stove top the way I cook, some people um, take less time, but I like to take more time. And then I think the crock pot's like going great guns, probably four or six hours, it'll be good to go too. So um, I will let you know when I come back uh, half a day from now, how things are going, or you know, quarter of a day from now, how things are going. And uh, then we'll, we'll do the taste test after on the three different cooking methods. Okay, we're back. Um, all three batches of chili have been cooking for almost five hours. Um, <clears throat> frankly, I put it on and went back to bed because it was three o'clock in the morning. So um, this is uh, the chili cooking on the stove top at, in a heavy bottom pan. Um, as you can see, it has reduced quite a bit. It's evaporated quite a bit of liquid. Not as much as I would like, but um, I can keep it cooking for several more hours, so that's fine. I could also turn up the heat. I don't think I'll do that, though. I think it's cooking fine. It just needs a bit more time, more than more heat. So that's the stovetop version. And then we'll look at the um, in-the-oven version, which could, also, which could also use more time and could... Um, I'm going to take the lid off. Oh, it's very liquidy. It's very liquidy. So I'm going to take the lid off now and let it continue cooking with no lid. I might even turn the temperature up to 250 now that it's daytime and I'm up and I'm not worried about anything burning or sticking. Okay, so that's the oven cast iron version. That's the stovetop version. That one is actually doing the, um, the most condensing and the most caramelizing right now is the stovetop version. And then um, over here we have... The crock pot version, and remember, crock pots are not meant to condense or to cook without a lid. So, all the liquid in the pot is gonna stay in the pot. So here's the the crock pot version. Oh dear, it looks something like soup actually. Um, it's gonna be really liquidy. Yeah, it's almost gonna come out like a chili soup. Um, actually, <laughs> when the first batches, I might even move this over to a stove top because I don't like my chili to be as liquidy as this. So there's things that you could do here. You can add um, uh, cornstarch or you can serve it with toast or you could do different things to thicken it. But crock pot chili, if you cook as you're supposed to with the lid on, um, is not going to condense and get thick the way stovetop chili will. But it'll still be good. People still eat it. Um, <laughs> That's really liquidy, <laughs> like really liquidy. Hmm. I might, uh, I might, I might address that by changing cooking methods. But um, okay, so there's crock pot oven is going in with the lid off now, and I'm gonna turn the temperature up to 250. Stove top is doing okay. I'm gonna leave that one going just the way it is, but maybe for a few more hours. Okay. 
Okay, so here we are at the six hour mark. I did turn the heat up under the stovetop chili to three because um, I was up and around to stir it and make sure it didn't stick and it has reduced uh, fantastically and it is caramelizing beautifully. It's gonna be a good pot of chili. Um, here is the oven in the cast iron. Don't be put off by the fact that it's darkened. It will get darker um, simply because of the iron and also because it's um, really crisping and caramelizing and reducing. I turned the heat up to 300 degrees. Um, and it's it's going to be delicious. It's going to be fantastic. It's a little bit darker than the stovetop version and it is reducing nicely. This has been in the oven for six hours. Now, <clears throat> the bad news. Okay, the crock pot chili. Uh, I'm going to call it chili soup. Okay, it's, it's, I, I would not, I wouldn't put this on, on the table in front of guests. I wouldn't serve this chili. It's far too liquidy. I think I'm just going to recommend crock pots for soup. Um, I'm going to take this crock pot batch of chili and I am going to transfer it to the oven batch. Um, it's going to fill the pan up quite far and it will allow what's, um, in there to become more liquidy and caramelize even more in the hours ahead. So I'm going to give up on the crock pot. Sorry, crock pots are for soup, not for thick meals. Um, and I'm going to dump that chili into my oven batch and um, put it back in the oven for like, I don't know, several more hours. Um, and uh, it will be thick and sweet and caramelized and delicious when it's finished. The stovetop pan is doing great as well. Okay, so here we are 12 hours after I started. The stovetop chili is perfect and fantastic. Um, I'm gonna let it cool and then I will package it up to go into the freezer. The um, oven chili is, I'm guessing, even more perfect and even more fantastic. Um, you can see it's a little bit more caramelized, a little bit thicker, it's truly thicker. Um, I'm gonna, it's just steaming like crazy because I just took it out of the oven. I'm gonna let it cool um, and then I will package it up for lunches for the freezer. I'll leave some of the fridge to eat immediately. But between the Dutch oven um, that went into the oven and the, that's a cast iron Dutch oven, and the um, Paderno Dutch oven, which cooked on the stovetop, they both turned out perfect and fantastic. I had some before I went to, uh, between swimming and my dog walk and it was awesome. It was a perfect meal. And um, I will say that the Paderno on the stovetop, the cast iron in the oven turned out perfect and the crock pot, no, no. Let's not make chili in the crock pot again. It turns out to be chili soup. It doesn't thicken, it doesn't uh, caramelize, it doesn't reduce, it's, um, it's like soup. So no, make soup in the crock pot, not chili. But look at that chili, eh? Ooh, ah, with cheese melted on top and some toast squares to go with it. It's gonna be fantastic. Good luck with your chili and try new things.